Want to welcome a special guest into the Stacking the Box podcast, Clay Matthews, longtime Green Bay Packers, Super Bowl champion back in 2010. Uh, Clay, first off, how are you in your, uh, in your retirement from the NFL? I'm good. I'm doing real well. Um, well, actually, you know, I'm a stay at home now dad, to, to stay at home dad now to three young kids. So um, I just said this, you know, in an interview previous to this, but, uh, you know, trying to raise three little kids is uh, more stressful than any game I ever played in my 11 year career. And I truly mean that. So uh, I'm doing well, though, ultimately enough about enough about the kids. How old are your kids? They're three, five, and seven. So I'm I'm just keeping my wa- my head above water right now. Yeah, that's that's a challenge. That is cool. I, my my daughter turned five this morning, and and I have a six month old, and so that'll yeah that'll keep you busy for you getting any time. sleep with a six month old? I think it's about nine months where they stop sleeping through the night, and you got to get up and you know do that whole song and dance. But yeah, it's uh it's a challenge, but it's it's one you accept as a parent. Um, right, look, but. Right. So actually, when you have kids, you do a ton of laundry, right? I mean, you're doing laundry constantly. You are working on behalf of Tide today for a pretty cool contest they're doing. Why don't you explain a little bit of what you're doing, what Tide's doing? And that's a great tie-in, by the way. This is why you're a professional. Well, that is true. I am, I am teaming up with Tide this season to tackle superstitions around the league. You know, people have their, you know, their lucky socks, their lucky jock strap, perhaps, but more so their lucky jersey. And, and ultimately, what we're here to do is, um, you know, your, your jersey may be lucky, but ultimately it's dirty and we need you to wash it. And we would we would very much like it if you washed it with Tide. And I just posted to my Instagram page a uh, video asking you, the fan, what you would do to to wash your lucky Jersey and um, you comment on it. And ultimately there's a chance to win big prizes there. So we're hoping to have some fun with fans this year, be interactive, um, show off all the fan bases, their lucky jerseys and and trying to get them to wash them as well. So while they may be lucky, we can get them not so dirty. All right. So you had a lot of teammates over the years. Uh, Who, who had the worst superstition? Who is the guy with the superstition? Like, come on, man. Like whether it was like not washing clothes or, or wearing the same suit every day you know, on a road trip. Like what, who, who are the, who are the one you're like, man, you, you got to do better than this. I think, I don't know if anyone, I can't name anybody off the top of my head, but I would say the linemen are notorious for just being linemen. And I think that's synonymous with what you would expect. I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, but I also had guys who, you know, you get like a mesh bag that you throw your, your loose articles of clothing in. And we had some guys who were, who were too lazy to do their laundry. They would have, they would ro- rotate their clothes into this mesh bag that would get washed with everybody else's gear, uh, Packers, Rams gear, whatever it is. So I don't know if it's so much superstition, but it might just be all pun intended, dirty laundry that we're, uh, that we're airing here. All right. So one of the, one of your most famous teammates, of course, Aaron Rodgers, who's still going, coming off two MVP seasons, Give me a little bit of perspective. Who is Aaron Rodgers? Who, what is he like? I mean, you saw him both as a younger player and then as a player as he went all the way through his career. Like, who, who is Aaron? Who I feel like a lot of people don't really know who he is, just, just trying to kind of figure that out. I'm still trying to figure out who Aaron is. I mean, he's uh, Aaron's an anomaly, you know, and he's, uh, he's an intellectual and he's very smart and obviously – very gifted at his craft. I mean, strictly speaking on behalf of football, the things he was able to do, not only on game day, but, you know, in practice, the throws he makes are just truly remarkable and arguably one of the best, if not, you know, the best quarterback to ever play. And, you know, obviously that's a separate debate, you know, we're bringing in Tom and and whatnot and Super Bowls, but just his uh, ability to put the ball wherever he wants to do is, is truly remarkable. And I think I had texted him in 2020 it was my first season, not playing. And I just, from sitting on the, the, the couch watching him and he, he is fun to watch. And, but on top of that too, there's a reason why he's been on top of the game for so long is uh, you know, he challenges himself and he puts himself in uncomfortable positions. And, and ultimately he's a, he's an interesting character in that, I think, um, you know, a lot of people want quarterbacks, especially being leaders of the team and, and faces of the NFL to fit a certain type of mold. And he doesn't do that. And, um, you know, good for him. He, he kind of marches to the beat of his own drum and, and 
you got to love them for that. And we still have a great relationship. I actually just texted him a few days ago, as a matter of fact. So, um, yeah, we still have a great relationship. I, I enjoy watching him. I love all the uh, the coverage that comes around him, too, and all the mayhem that comes with it as well. So, but, uh, you know, big listener of, of, of him and, and Pat McAfee. And, you know, when he talks, I feel like, uh, you know, you have to listen because it's not just the, you know, the go pack and we wanted it more. All the cliche sure. lines that I'm sure I spit out over the years. All right. So, we had Alex Smith on this podcast a little while ago, and I asked him, I said, look, give me one thing Patrick Mahomes is not good at. And he's like, he can't order a steak. He's terrible at ordering a steak. Had Stephon Diggs on a week ago. He's like, Josh Allen can't beat me in basketball. What is the one thing that Aaron Rodgers is not good at? Because he's unbelievable on the football field. He's had success off of it. But what is like, – is there one thing you're like, man, I don't care how great he is on the field. He can't do this. <laughs> um. No, I mean, I, I think you can do it all. But uh, you mentioned basketball and Josh Allen. There was a it was a, an infamous game that nobody saw. Maybe security cameras down in um, Fort Lauderdale, Florida at the 2009 Pro Bowl. It was Team Matthews. It was me and my two brothers first, uh, Aaron and one of his brothers and one of his friends, and we took it to him and ultimately beat him. I don't think he talked to me for a month after that. So that's, uh, and he'll know exactly what I'm talking about too. We, we, we took it to him. So, I mean, maybe we'll just fall in line and say, he's just not that good at basketball, even though he posts videos and maybe he's only a good mid range shooter. I know he's always talking about mid range, but ultimately we, we took it to him that day. Awesome. Awesome. I, too bad that footage never got out. Um, all right. So you played at USC, you played at the Packers, two of the most iconic football brands that there are. Which one was more special to you, coming out on Saturday at the Coliseum, the Rose Bowl over the years, or was it Sunday at Lambeau? It's definitely the Packers. I think just, you know, you, we're talking about playing at, at the highest level with the Packers, where obviously, you know, SC is, is still a collegiate team, but both truly remarkable, and, and, and the further – I'm removed from my careers, both with SC and, and Green Bay, that both you're, you know, you're truly able to remark on, on the opportunities afforded and what we were able to accomplish both individually as a team. In fact, I was just with uh, Mark Sanchez, my quarterback for, you know, at SC at the time. And we were talking about, I think we played in four Rose Bowls in a row and how we were lamenting over the at the time, how we didn't want to play any more Rose Bowls, but when you go back and watch the Rose Bowl now, the granddaddy of them all, and uh, man, I'm blanking on who used to call who used to call those games. He's since He's passed Jackson. away. Yes, yes. I mean, it was just, you know, it, it, those were truly, you know, iconic games. The colors, the Pasadena, and on January 1st. But on top of that, too, you know, Green Bay, Wisconsin. I mean, it's there's there's nothing like it, and, and you can't talk about the NFL without you know, teams like uh, the Green Bay Packers and what they mean to, um, you know, to that league. A couple more here with Clay Matthews on Stacking the Box. Look, I got to ask you, you know, you talk about Green Bay. Green Bay is a, is a different animal than any other city in, in the NFL, right? I mean, you, 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 if for anyone who's ever been to Green Bay, I've been fortunate enough to be up there a bunch. Like it is, it's a town with a stadium. I mean, it really, it, it, yeah. it, everything revolves around the team. What is it like living there as a player and, and someone like yourself who's so recognizable? Right? I mean, like, what is it like just being to be, hey, I got to go to the grocery store in Green Bay. You know, I've got to go out you know, in, in Green Bay. I'm going to go out and get dinner. What is that experience like as a player who everybody, the second you walk out your door, they know exactly who you are? Well, you know, when I when I when I flew in there as a 22 year old rookie, I remember flying in. It was so green. I was coming from Los Angeles, California, which is just all hardscape and buildings and. But, um, man, there wasn't a lot to do for, for a young kid coming from L.A. But ultimately, uh, as the years went by and I had a family, met my wife, had, had children, it was a great place to live, truly. I mean, there's no traffic. Everybody treats you well. Um, lots of places, lots of parks, you know, stuff that, that, that parents think about. But you're right. I mean, you are kind of the superstars, the, the rock stars, so to speak, up there. There's no other franchise other than you know two hours south in milwaukee in which case obviously the bucks and and um you know are rolling and, and the brewers um 
Well, I don't know how they did last year, this year, but uh, I haven't been keeping up with them. But ultimately, um, yeah, I mean, you, you can't go to the grocery store. You can't go out to to the restaurants without a, you know, a phone coming up, you know, snapping pictures of you or somebody telling you what you did wrong in the game. But I think that's what truly makes it special is that it's all football. You know, and I remember the first off season I went back there for um, off season workouts and the city felt dead. You know, it felt dead. There was no, that it wasn't alive. And, and then, you know, fast forward to the following season and, and it just comes back alive with this, um, you know, this promise that, that Packers football is back and hopefully a Lombardi trophies in the future. Well, last thing I got to ask you, you come from a football family. I mean, along with the Mannings, you guys are like the first family of football between your, your father and your uncle and so on and so forth. Was there ever a time for you, you felt like you weren't going to be an NFL player? I know you, you know, USJ, you walked on, you had to earn your stripes there, but did you ever, was it ever a question like, this is definitely what I want to do in life? No, I mean, honestly, my dad didn't push me to be, you know, and I hate to use a Tiger Woods analogy, but I wasn't trained like that. In fact, it wasn't, I didn't start until my senior year in high school. And then I walked on at SC and I wasn't very good. In fact, I, <laughs> my little brother, uh, Casey always reminds me, but I told him, I think it was after my, my third, my fourth year at SC, I, I was a red shirt. So I got to play five years, but I told him that I, I was hoping to, uh, join a team as a free agent. And if I got cut, I would have enough money to rebuild an old classic car. So that, that at 21, that was my goal in life was to have enough money to uh, rebuild a classic car if I didn't make special teams. And then in, uh, when I was 22, I you know was drafted in the first round of the Packers. And then I, I thought, well, rather than you know fixing an old car, I'd rather just buy a bunch of brand new cars or at least have the the means to do so. So I think I'm going to stick it out with sacking the quarterback. That seems to, seems to be a great way to uh, have success in the league. What's the best car you ended up buying? Oh, or your, or your favorite. No, this is this. I actually didn't buy my first car until I was done playing. I, I got a, uh, I got a, a navigator now family car, but um, ultimately I didn't buy, I didn't, I didn't spend any money on cars. No, I was good about that. I was good. I was good with my money. I was good with my money. I'm I'm doing all right. Okay. So you, you never went and got the clay. You, your whole goal of football was to get yourself some beat up junker that you could fix. And then you played yeah. and became a, a two-time all pro and six-time pro bowler. And said, so, you know, I'm good. The navigator's enough. Yeah. Well, the navigator, when I when I had the kids, I mean, I yeah. had to get it, but I I was good. Like jewelry cars all that i i wasn't i didn't have to but i did just i did just make a purchase i bought a uh an f-250 super duty um but i mean i'm also 36 too so you know i mean i i didn't i didn't i didn't pull up to lambo in a in a lambo or a ferrari or anything like that so i, I think I, I think i was good with my decision making process good stuff good stuff well clay i'm, I'm glad uh retirement's treating you well good luck with the kids I sympathize. It can be fun. That can also put you to bed at about nine o'clock at night. So best of luck to you. Thanks so much for joining Stag in the Box. And everybody make sure to check out uh, Tide's contest with your superstitions. And maybe your superstition needs a wash. But uh, Clay, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure.